Hi and welcome. So this time around, I'm going to be looking to answer or at least address a statement made by one of my commenters in one of my previous videos. A gentleman by the name of Mel Gross wrote a comment about uh, a statement I made about my six jaw chuck. I had just gotten the bison six jaw chuck. I was very excited about it because it had three pinions. Just going back, previous to this, I had a Shars set true chuck that was a th one pinion chuck. When I bought it, I bought it based on the Shars website and all the pictures only showed it from an angle where you could see one pinion. I just had assumed that it had three, much like my three jaw chuck. And when I got it, I was surprised to find it only had one pinion. And that, seen, that bothered me because my three jaw chuck has three pinions and Adam Booth's six jaw chuck that he has also has three pinions. And historically, when I was tightening a part in the chuck uh, that had multiple pinions, I would walk the chuck key around the chuck, tightening each one sequentially, just a little bit creeping up on the final force that I wanted to exert on the part. Um, much like you do with a set of uh, uh, studs on a car wheel, you don't tighten one all the way to final torque and then, you know, and then just go around in a clockwise or counterclockwise clockwise pattern. You go crosswise and build up tension equally on the wheel. And it made sense to me. Uh, the first time I ran across this was Adam Booth with his six jaw chuck. He always did that and he commented that he was creeping up on the final tension as well. And it made sense to me. It just seemed logical and I had no reason to question that. It just came across as common sense. But Mr. Gross uh, pointed out that in his buck manual, it said if you tighten the six jaw chuck with one pinion, you get more accuracy than with two, etc. And I'm really curious about that because from the surface, it seems like that's counterintuitive. And I want to find out, you know, at least in this particular test example that I'm going to try, how true that is. Because it would seem to me that <clears throat> if you only tighten from one pinion, you're moving the whole scroll at one time, but the force is being applied at the point over here, here say, on the opposite side of the chuck, the jaws that are being tightened there are farthest away from that point where you're applying force, and any flex in that pinion disc uh, are gonna cause um, you know, distortion and I would think differential force on the jaws, but maybe that's actually wrong. So I thought, what the heck, let's go measure it. I've got the uh, bison six jaw over here. I sold my Char's six jaw. Uh, very shortly after I got the bison, so I don't have it to compare against. But uh, uh, let's test this and see what kind of repeatability we get. By the way, before we get started here, I wanted to thank Mr. Gross again for his comment. Uh, a lot of the commenters, pretty much almost all of the commenters, uh, leave very, very constructive comments in the videos, and I really appreciate that. I learn a ton from what you have to say, and it always makes me uh, think about what I'm doing. And helps me to improve my game, so I really appreciate the comments. Uh, so, well, let's get started. So I've been, I've cleaned these jaws very carefully, although they're serrated, so it's pretty hard to, uh, to use a rag because it just takes pieces of the rag off, and I want to get this as, as, well, as clean as possible because I'm going to take the part in and out. Now for the part, I purchased this 5 8 inch carbide bar. There's a solid carbide bar. It's supposed to be uh, accurate to plus zero minus uh, half a thousandth uh, roundness accuracy or diameter accuracy. So one reason I chose carbide is it's RC, at least this one's claimed to be RC 94. So the jaws shouldn't be able to dent it because I was worried that if I use the metal part and I take it out, you know, I tighten the jaws down, then take it out, put it back in, the jaws will have left a mark on the part and I don't want that to happen. So uh, <clears throat> that, thus the carbide, hopefully this will work and hopefully it won't mar the bar because the bar was very expensive. Um, so let's tighten it up and see where we go from here. So the first test, I am going to just tighten the chuck key, just one pinion from the top and I'm going to use the one where the bison logo is because that'll be my zero. I actually marked another one as zero, which is interesting, uh, just to come back to, which is this one here. That's where the text is. Maybe I'll use that one instead. So we'll tighten the chuck draw from way too open, you know, the several inches of opening, down to the five eighths. I think that's getting close. We will insert our carbide bar. Try and make sure it's clean. Okay. 
So before we cinch this down at all, I'm just going to rotate it gently, ease off and rotate gently to make sure I get it seated well. And I'm going to give it a little gronk there. And let's just see where the set true chuck is right now. We can adjust the set true and we will adjust the set true chuck so that it is close to dead on. So without even doing anything, it's a little bit less than a thousandth out. And that's way back here. I think if we got closer to the jaw, although this thing's very straight, so it should be about the same. Yeah, it's identical. So that's a good sign. That means I've, I don't have an angle. There's no taper on it. And the jaw that I'm, I'm tightening is one that I've got marked with a zero here opposite the text. And uh, I'm going to see if I can dial this in a little better with the set true settings. So I've got to loosen the three bolts here and then use these big adjusters out here to tighten out. Interestingly, my Shars had six bolts going around rather than just three to tighten the chuck to the uh, set true base. Uh, so that's a little interesting variation. So we're going to loosen these guys just a little bit. I don't know what size they are. Here we are. Okay, one. Just leave them a little snug. Use the momentum. So after loosening those, that shifted things just a little bit, although it's still about as accurate, which is pretty funny. So next up, I'm going to zero this guy. All right, so hopefully you can see this dial here. I'll shadow, shade it a little bit. We're at about a tenth out. That's it. Maybe not even, maybe even less than a tenth. So we're set. I'm going to snug up these three uh, bolts here to tighten that, and we'll be right back. All right, we're all tightened up, and we're at about a tenth. So now the question is, pop the part. I've got my zero reference jaw here, so now I'm going to pop the part out. And I'm going to put it back in. So here's the part. We're loose. I'm going to clean it off. Got some grease on it there. I'm glad there's no marks on the bar. That's a good sign. We will put it back in and we will give it a little gronk. And, well, that's impressive. It's going to be hard to do a lot better than that. We're back, back to about a tenth out. All right, next, let's try it tightening all three. Although this is really problematic because it's so darn good already. That is incredibly repeatable. Maybe two tenths. Wow, okay. All right, so we'll loosen it up. this guy off and this bar is only supposed to be accurate within guaranteed to within half a thousandth so plus or minus two and a half so I'm going to walk this in so I'm going to tighten this up walking around here okay go back in Oh, look at that. That's actually much worse. We're out by a full thousandth. Well, I did not expect that at all. That's a very interesting, actually it's more than a thousandth, it's about 1.2 thousandths. So let's go back up here, see if we can repeat this the other way. So we're gonna loosen this guy up, make sure it's loose, tighten on the single pinion. Holy cow, look at that. It's back to one to two tenths again. Well, that first test uh, definitely suggests that tightening three multiple pinions is not the way to go uh, for accuracy. 
Okay, well, let's try this again. So we're going to loosen this guy up. We're going to loosen him up. Leave the part right there. Start walking the tightness in. Okay, and go back for a zero. And look, lo and behold, 1.2 thousandths again. That is completely amazing and totally counterintuitive to me. I still don't understand exactly why it's happening like that, but look at that. So walking up on the torque, maybe it makes for a tighter uh, jaw configuration. You know, you get more force on the part walking it around, but you certainly don't get better accuracy. You're getting significantly worse accuracy, about six times worse. So one more time, last time, loosen this guy up, parts loose. Tighten it up, give it a gronk. And look at that. Well, at least in this example, that kind of convinced me that uh, for this jaw, this chuck jaw, the way I'm testing it, uh, it's definitely better to only tighten one pinion. And in this case, I'm going back to the same pinion each time, the one I've marked with a zero here when I bought the chuck. Uh, I, I would never in a million years have guessed this, but very interesting. One more test. Here's a one and a quarter inch, roughly, diameter test bar. MT4 on the end here, but this part's straight, and look at this. Just a couple of tenths. The Shars was not doing anything like this in uh, accuracy with repeatability. Once you went to a larger size, it quit repeating. Uh, that's very impressive to me. I don't know what the Bison's doing differently. Maybe the scroll is ground better, um, but this is definitely a better chuck. And the price was only a bit more, not a ton more. I got a really good deal on this though. Someone was selling it on eBay new open stock and uh, got a great deal on it. So very pleased just for the heck of it without resetting the zero, uh, the set zero configuration here uh, and adjusting this, I've gone from a five eighths to a half inch bar. And now we're out about half a thousandth on the half inch bar. And that was just tightening it in place. Um, let me go back to my zero here. So let me see if that was just how I have it put in. So let's just take the part, rotate it a little bit. You can see the micro 100 mark there. And we're gonna give it a gronk and come back in. And wow, okay, that time about three tenths, about minus one plus two. Okay, so now let's loosen this guy up. Move it around. Slowly walk in the tension. I think we're there. And one and a half thousandths. That's with a half inch bar and not resetting the set true chuck. Well, <laughs> I guess the proof is kind of in the pudding here. Let's go back to my zero reference. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen it up. Tighten it with this one pinion. And we're back to two to three tenths. Okay, well, I'm surprisingly convinced. If anyone understands how it works this way, please let me know. But I thought that was really interesting. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.